Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So let me start today's video by telling you a very fascinating concept of market research. It is called as human centered design, HCD practice. This is something that I've learned extensively about during my time at management consulting organizations. So HCD says this, right, that you keep humans at the center of your design process. Now there is a company in the US, it is called as IDEO, IDEO. And it comes up with really creative products and processes. For example, they designed a very interesting shopping cart just by studying the consumer behavior of how they shop around on different malls and different general stores. Now, this is a very powerful concept. So if you are a company that is building HCD practice and if you are keeping customers at the center of your business processes, you become a very customer oriented organization. Now there are a bunch of such companies in India that are doing that and they have done it very well in the past and they would continue to do this. Incorporating this HCD practice into business is something that can give massive results for any business and today I am going to talk about one such business. It is trading at deep discounts right now. Probably it might be a great option for us to go and buy it. Which company I am talking about? I will reveal the name in a minute. But very quick shout out to our sponsors Ditto for this video. They are also an excellent company that has instituted HCD design practice in terms of buying insurance. Up until I used Ditto, I myself was deeply confused about which insurance to buy, which insurance not to buy because insurance is such a complicated topic. You can go and schedule a free phone call, absolutely free phone call with an insurance expert. That is what the HCD element of Ditto is that they allow you to go and speak with experts for free, which is the massive pain point for customers. They solve it and as a result, you are able to purchase a good insurance. So go check the link in the description box and you can avail your free phone call. Also, just a very quick FYI that health insurance companies are increasing their premium from this year by approximately 40%. So right now would be a great time for you to consider buying a health and a life insurance. So back on topic, which company am I talking about which has perfected, nearly perfected this HCD practice? It is Colgate Palmolive and according to me, the stock right now is trading at deep discounts and it can prove to be an excellent buying opportunity. So let me present both the technical analysis and the fundamental analysis. So let's first quickly talk about the pricing point for Colgate Palmolive. So let us review the entire chart and if you take a look at the recent high that the stock has made. So it made its high here and currently it is roughly trading at here. So approximately 23% discount going on on this stock so to say because I truly believe that it will reach its previous level very soon. How soon? We cannot forecast it per se, it might take half a year, it might take one year, but it will definitely get to its top, provided that there is nothing fishy that is going on in the company and the business is stable. So I will present the business analysis and let us try to see if it would make sense for us to enter this stock. Let us also understand the reason for this fall. So let me very quickly cover the business fundamentals of the company. If you take a look at the market share for Colgate Palmolive, you will see that it is predominantly into selling toothpaste and toothbrush in India. Toothpaste, toothbrush, simple things, nothing fancy there. So they have 52.7% market share in toothpaste and approximately 48% market share in toothbrush. Two things, two very simple concepts. If you take a look at the revenue mix, now toothbrush makes 15% because it's more of a durable good so to say. People do not replace their toothbrush every single month, but they would probably buy toothpaste every two to three months. Tell me in the comment box, how frequently do you buy toothpaste and toothbrush? So therefore, majority of the revenue comes from toothpaste and minority of the revenue comes from toothbrush. So super simple business model, nothing fancy there. If you take a look at the growth of the business, it was approximately at 2000 crores. Over the years, it has increased to 5000 crores, which is decent growth, which is not like explosive growth, but it is decent growth. And that is predominantly the reason why I'm discussing it today because the stock price has fallen. So therefore, something like Colgate Palmolive becomes a good buy. We will understand this more. But talking about the sales numbers, the sales have been fairly consistent. It's a fairly stable growth company because of the nature of the product. Earlier, I explained that there are two types of products in the market. Let me quickly recap it for you. So one is called as elastic products and the second are called as inelastic products, right? Inelastic products. Elastic products would mean something that you can do away with. It's not as if that you absolutely need to buy these products. For example, for some, it could be chocolate. For my wife, chocolate is a must. So that is probably an inelastic product for her. But for majority of the people, it's not as if that something bad will happen to you if you don't 
buy chocolates and if you stop eating chocolates it's good to consume it's fun to consume but it's not as if that it has a habit oriented demand right so chocolates would have elastic product if hypothetically cadbury's just 5x its five star prices that it starts selling every bar of five star at 50 rupees then it's very likely that you will stop eating five star you will switch to some other chocolate right that has elastic demand but in elastic products these would be something like cigarettes right this would be something like toothbrush right so essentially these are things that you will continue to use despite whatever the economy is happening these are inelastic product their sales stay consistent and companies that are generating these sales even their sales numbers and profit margins also stay somewhat consistent so let us very quickly see if this story is matching up right so the sales have been fairly consistent fairly consistent growth of 2 300 crores every single year profits fairly consistent growth in profits also it's not as if that profits have gone down yes it went down a little bit in 2020 but since then it has been rising and this is also reflected in the stock price if you will take a look at the stock price you will clearly see something very interesting that hey this is the 200 day moving average it's a fairly stable demand business and the stock price keeps on hitting its 200 day moving average right now it is trading here right and there is a good 20% gap so this 20% can recover very quickly and you can make this money in a very easy manner if there is something that is not fundamentally off about the business so let's talk about why the stock price has fallen by approximately 20% and should you be worried so should you be worried absolutely not why the stock price has happened can be seen from the 2020 commentary that the management of the company gave i'm putting it here you can read it at your own convenience it simply says that in covid 2020 times people continued to use toothpaste but they did not buy as many brushes which is very interesting for me also because i always considered something like toothbrush to have a fairly stable demand it did not have a fairly stable demand a lot of people postponed their purchase of even toothbrush during covid as a result overall revenues of the company fell more important question for you to ask yourself is that hey would this demand go up the answer is yes okay because people who have not replaced their toothbrushes in 2020 covid they will definitely do it they will definitely replace it again they are likely to buy colgate toothbrush only because the monopoly of colgate is there and i will show that to you in a minute so now let me discuss four specific reasons as to why this stock is likely to grow over a next one year period very very simply put very easy to understand language i will use the first reason for the business growth of the company is that it is going to undertake something called as sku expansion so sku simply means stock keeping units stock keeping units means rather than having mint flavored colgate toothpaste they will also have peach flavored toothpaste or whichever strawberry flavored toothpaste right so these are skus these are different stock keeping units different different types of products so the company is already introducing it and there are two major categories where they are likely to benefit one is ayurveda based ayurveda based colgate toothpaste are gaining more traction in the market right now and this can become one of the key revenue drivers for the company second they have introduced something called as diabetes based toothpaste now this is very interesting because a lot of people in india currently suffer from diabetes and if colgate becomes a market leader in this diabetes based toothpaste then this becomes like a new product category for them in which they can accelerate their sales on top of this their previous game of accelerating their oral health care in terms of mouthwash and bunch of different things they are anyways undertaking it So this is the first key reason why the company is likely to retain its sales going forward in the future. You are absolutely right. I know I can hear a lot of clicking noises that hey Patanjali has come up with Ayurveda, X Y Z company has come up with different different things. I understand, but but honestly, the market is big enough for everyone, and Colgate will still survive and thrive rather in this market. The second key reason is that they are undertaking margin expansions. Margin expansion simply means pricing power of a company. if they were selling a toothpaste let's say at 100 rupees now they have the ability to increase the price to 110 rupees and this is a snippet that you can take a look at this question was asked to the management of the company and they categorically said that our focus is both margin expansion and volume expansion in fact they have taken margin expansions first and they are focusing on volume also so you can read this entire snippet to get clarification on this point now interestingly there is geographical expansion that is happening that will accelerate margin expansion with volume expansion volume expansion means that more units of the product will be sold margin expansion means that the price at which the product will be sold will be high so let me write this point down for you right margin expansion and volume expansion right so margin expansion means that instead of selling the product at 100 rupees they are selling it at 110 rupees 
and volume expansion means that they are selling it to more number of customers right so how are both these things playing out so number one we need to understand that this margin expansion is coming from urban areas for Colgate, right? They have already built a very aggressive distribution network. The availability of Colgate toothbrush and toothpaste is widely available, easy to purchase, even online, good reviews, everything. So urban areas, they can undertake margin expansions. They are already doing that. Now they are getting more customers and the growth of customers in rural has been very high, right? Over the last few years. And this is only picking up. Now this is the snippet. Please read it again. You will understand this point more. Simply put, the company is exploring both the channels and it is well poised to explore both the channels for growing the overall revenues. Now, the third reason why I feel that the company is likely to expand and come back to its previous revenue growth rate is super simple that the company has the ability to manage its SKU. This comes to the human centered design concept that I was explaining earlier. Now, let me help you understand this point better. What happens is that you might ask me that, hey Akshat, Colgate is expanding very rapidly in urban areas also. It is expanding very rapidly in rural areas also. It is launching new products like diabetes oriented toothpaste and mouthwash of different different flavors and whatnot. So how does it decide what product to launch versus what product not to launch? Because every time it launches a product, there is extensive marketing that happens around it. People have to store it. Company has to pay so much commissions to distributors, retailers, take so much spent in terms of distributing the product. So this is where great companies like HUL, Asian Paints, Colgate are able to manage their SKUs. They use demand analytics prediction. What they simply do is that they have so much data with the company that they feed it into different machines. They try to understand the customer. They organize specific research. They organize focus group discussion with customers to keep on getting more data. This is precisely what is meant by human centered design that you go back, look at how people are purchasing your products, understand more from them by doing customer surveys that what they like, what they don't like, what type of products they would expect. So from this perspective, you generate so much data that it feeds into the mechanism of creating that line of SKUs. So if in the next six months, Colgate wants to release 10 new flavors of toothpaste, it can do it very quickly and it will be fairly successful at it. And those 10 products will work with almost certain guarantee because of the fact that they have done this HCD analysis really, really well. Now, here is a snippet for you to take a look at. You can go and read it to understand more about how Colgate Palmolive undertakes this SKU analysis and how it feeds all its data into different customer journey to generate a list of products that they can release and they start working towards it. But to summarize the entire point here, what allows these big companies to keep on releasing good products one after the next is because of the fact that they have access to great customer data. They look at all the different attributes. Again, another picture for you here to study. You can take a look at it here and understand the viewpoint that this data is worth gold for these companies and they are actually using it. It's not as if that this is some tech company which is just collecting data and not using it. They actually use this data to strengthen its product line and demand forecasting. Now, fourth and final point regarding Colgate Palmolive is that it is currently undertaking cost cutting initiatives by playing a more long term game. So this is an entire article. I will link it in the description box. And here is a very important point that was outlined from the management conversation. So it is getting into something called as recyclable toothpaste tubes. Now this has massive cost saving opportunities. The experiments have already run in the US really well. And this is being brought to India. Initially, the profitability of something like Colgate Palmolive will go down because these recyclable toothpaste tubes are expensive. But with time, the technology improves, the cost saving around it improves, the collection mechanism improves. So in the long term, this is a beneficial play for a company like Colgate Palmolive, where majority of their sales is generated through toothpaste tubes. So these are the specific reasons why I feel that Colgate Palmolive is going to go back to its 200 day moving average and there is a 20% gain to be made in this company in a short span of time. Now, are there any challenges that the company is facing right now? And are there any sustainable threats that the company is facing? The biggest threat that comes in my opinion is through online distribution. For example, if companies like Amazon gets into toothpaste selling business through its own in-house brands, then of course it's going to hurt Colgate Palmolive. The second is the growth of regional specialized players. For example, Patanjali. Patanjali is focusing on its Ayurveda oriented toothpaste and the entire company is built around Ayurveda. So it becomes a niche player in that particular domain. 
So it is a specialized player. These type of companies like Patanjali, if they grow to become really big, they can hurt something like Colgate Palmolive in the long run. These are two major threats that I see with the Colgate Palmolive business. But at least in the midterm, the prospects look good. In the short term, prospects look good. Not because it's a very high growth company, but because of the fact that the stock price is available at a discount. It's a fairly stable firm. There has never been any massive problems with the company. So from that perspective, if you are an investor, you could consider taking some positions in this stock. Thank you so much. And I will see you the next time. Please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.